Hi, this is Ren. This is Casey. And this is All Walks of Film. Uh, today we did a double feature. We saw Kong Skull Island and we saw Logan. This was my second time seeing Logan and my first time obviously seeing Kong Skull Island. All right, so let's start with the bad. Yeah. So Kong Skull Island. Backing up a second. Huge King Kong nerd fucking love King Kong. Especially the 30s and 70s movies, which everyone gives the 70s shit for being the worst one. You haven't seen any of the spinoffs if you think that the 70s is the worst one. But it's actually my favorite adaptation because it's true to the spirit of the original while taking the message and doing something new and creative with it, which is my favorite form of an adaptation. Which, not to get into spoilers, but that's also kind of what Logan did. At the same time. So just to make the little parallel there. So yeah. going in. And I didn't like Godzilla. I didn't like the American 2014 Godzilla. But it's a different director. Which means nothing. These are producer movies. That's why they're marketed as. From the producers of Godzilla. So yeah these are producer movies. They're not director movies. And it's partly because. All of this stuff is leading to a franchise. Like. Everything now is, you know, trying to build their own cinematic universe because everybody's trying to car- copy Marvel. Right, because in this case, they're trying to build up Godzilla and King Kong. So they're going to do Godzilla, Kong Skull Island, Godzilla 2. Then they're going to do Godzilla versus King Kong. Spoilers. Godzilla 2 is actually called Godzilla King of the Monsters. It's Godzilla 2, dude. The original okay. one was Mutos, whatever. But spoilers, King Kong is going to win in Godzilla versus King Kong. In the Japanese one... Godzilla won, and the American one, King Kong's gonna win. Yeah, there there's a <laughs> lot of there's a lot of evidence given in this movie of why King Kong has the edge against Godzilla. Right. So going into this movie, I wasn't expecting this to be like Shin Godzilla or anything like that. I wasn't expecting it to be like Fury Road, where it's like you need to have a message and you have to be I mean, I, I kind of hoped a little bit because this takes place in the 70s. I thought it might be a little bit like the 70s version, but, you know, whatever. All I really wanted was a good King Kong and some good monster fighting. I would prefer if Brie Larson did a, you know, had a decent part in the movie, too. That's all I really wanted out of this movie. And I was still disappointed as hell. I just, I, all I wanted was a fucking movie to sit down and enjoy, turn my brain off, and just, like, have fun, and go along with the ride, and the movie wouldn't take me on a ride. Like, that's all I wanted. It's not that hard. I'm not that hard to please, I swear to God. But a big part of the reason why the movie couldn't sweep me away was, like, there were three major problems. Everything that was CGI, in particular, any of the action with... King Kong or any of the other monsters was at 75% speed. Everything was so slow. And then sometimes at the most random points, they would stop and do slow motion on the already slow action. Oh my God. It was boring. It was was boring. So it was like Zack Snyder when he was starting out. It was so like Zack Snyder that it was kind of painful. I was just like, I see... The punch is coming. Land the punch. Get there already. You're almost there. Contact. Like, for every movement. Oh my god, it was so painful. It was... I feel like it's not that hard. We just had Godzilla 2014, and for all my problems with Godzilla 2014, one of my problems was not that the action was too slow. I don't understand the... my, My... problem was that you couldn't see the action but when you could it looked good the animation was good the speed was right everything looked correct and for some reason all the movement was really slow like if you watch this movie we all know what how water moves we've been watching water our entire lives you see water come out of a faucet you have an idea i mean i know that's pressurized but like you you've gone to a stream and picked up a handful of water and seen the water fall off your fingers. You have an idea of how water moves. And if you watch the water, you can really see what I'm talking about, where it's like it's so slow. Everything's moving in like slow motion. You can see that with like facial expressions. It's just, I don't know why it's slow. 
Well, I think partly because they're not running the program that like the PS4 is running on, because I don't know if you saw some of the tech demos for the PS4, but like there are literal programs now that allow water to move in a realistic way. Um, yeah, we saw that in Disney, Godzilla 2014. Disney also did that. Yeah, Godzilla 2014. Like, like the tidal wave was amazing. None of the water effects looked anything like that. Yeah, also we're dealing with significantly smaller bodies of water in this movie. I mean, yeah, but they're still big bodies of water. They're still lakes. And it yeah. wasn't just water. I just pointed to that as an example because I think that's where it's really obvious to see that when water is falling, it doesn't fall that slowly. That's all I'm saying. It was just an example. Yeah. The other two problems, uh, one of them is they had five stylistic choices and they just did them on repeat. And again, it just got boring. It was repetitive. Like the eye motif that didn't tie in thematically in any way to the rest of the movie. How many times do we have, do we have to see that 10 times in a movie? Do we have to do the exact same thing every time there's a musical cue of any sort, establishing the source of the music, playing the music, and then after about five seconds, dropping it so you understand that it's diegetic? Do we need to do that with literally every musical cue in the entire movie? Yeah, it's one of those weird things because, like, what I thought was, why are we getting the same fucking songs that we get in every fucking Vietnam War movie? I get that we're trying to... Harken back to Apocalypse Now. I've seen the fucking poster. Yeah, exactly. But it just didn't work because in the movie, it's rah-rah military, which is weird, especially especially talking about the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. I mean, this feels more like Rambo, like later on in this sense, where it's like, oh yeah, look at the Americans. Like, we're so awesome. And yes, I know Sam Jackson's character was supposed to be a dick, but... You know, you never got into some of the darker aspects of the Vietnam War, which seem to draw parallels within the context of the story. You're just not taking advantage of it. Well, and especially with this movie where the island is fashioned after Vietnam, it looks exactly like Vietnam, and you have all these big monsters that you're contending with. Why isn't the wildlife on Skull Island a metaphor for the Vietnam War? Yeah, Why isn't it, it about it, the It seems to want to be war. that, but it, it it's not showing us that. Yeah. And it it feels too afraid to. Yeah, it, the whole movie did feel very timid. Let's just sort of be on the outskirts and do what's safe and not really do anything else. Also, it it seems too bound to the franchise to be its own not, movie. Not really, because with the exception of the inclusion of the natives... Nothing else really follows the traditional story. No, I mean, too, too bound Kong. to this franchise of the kaiju. Oh, I see. Uh, I see. Yes. You know, the Godzilla you and Rodan and all that stuff that yes, comes I, later. I see. Which gets into the third problem. This is not King Kong. With every really good kaiju monster, but in particular with King Kong, there is a personality. There is a difference between King Kong and Godzilla. And in this movie, there's literally no difference between King Kong and Godzilla. They literally could be the exact same person and it would make no difference because King Kong is somewhat animalistic. I mean, really only in the 30s one. A lot of the other ones make him too human, but he's playful. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. He's kind of like a puppy dog. You can see everything that's running through his mind. He has anger. He has fury. He has sadness. He gets playful. He jokes around. I mean, not like verbally, but like he goofs off a little bit. He he has a personality. There is a person that King Kong is. And in this movie, every scene with King Kong was, well, I'm here. I'm doing this thing. Yeah, I mean, there were some moments where you could tell that King Kong was pissed, but that, like, pissed is not a More range like of emotion. mildly miffed. Kind of like a mild annoyance. More than yeah, anything th- else. I, I thought it was stupid that Kong somehow wanted to leave this guy alive for whatever fucking oh, reason. Oh, it was literally just because the plot demanded it in this particular instance. Yeah, because Kong would have fucking killed that guy in a fucking heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a little ridiculous. And like, they there was no animalness to it at all, which I didn't understand because Terry Notary was playing King Kong, I believe. Was it Terry Notary or Toby Kebbell? 
I think it was Terry Notary, right? It was Terry Notary played Rocket, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was him. I think it was Terry Notary. You could tell a little bit with the face. With the face, for sure. But he has spent so many years playing apes, and obviously his work in Planet of the Apes is amazing. I really boil this down to bad direction because, like, when you have the scene where he's in the lake, and I get that for some reason they're trying to parallel... Not for some reason. I understand that they're trying to parallel Kong to the humans. So you have the scene where you have... Uh, what's his name? Um, Chapman. Chapman is in the lake, and he's washing off his blood, and he's drinking the water, and you see Kong come in, and he does the same thing. He's, like, poking at his wound. He's grabbing the handful of water to drink it. Animals don't behave that way. Also, one of the issues that I have with that is one of the things that I love about King Kong, and you could make the argument that in Godzilla versus King Kong, if you're drawing that parallel, King Kong is is less of his personality, but that's Mm -hmm. partly the limitations of the suit actor. Exactly. King Kong is a very emotive character, and like... When uh, one of the things that I love about King Kong is when King Kong gets shot, he feels pain. Yeah, every and we feel fucking, that pain with him. Yeah, every fucking time. Even like even the Peter Jackson one, mm-hmm. like the Peter Jackson one, did it. I like every version has the Peter Jackson one also looked better. Yeah, which is sad because like the Peter Jackson one came out in what two thousand seven. No, I think it was. It was either 2005 or 2010. I feel bad that I don't know. But it's kind of like like going from Planet of the Apes back to Avatar. Yeah. Where, like, Avatar was good the second it came out, but it's already kind of dated and kind of uncanny valley. There's not a lot of range there. But, like, also his anatomy was really off. I really didn't like the texture they were using on his fur. There wasn't really anything distinctive about his... The only distinctive thing was, like, he had the scars on his chest... Which was kind of cool, a little bit, but like, not really. It's also sad that the best rendered animal in the movie was the fucking yak. The yak was really good. The yak was really good. That eye just made, oh my god, it made my heart hurt. The nose, you, the breath coming out of it, the texture of the fur, the the way that the you could feel the weight of his antlers, head. Really good stuff. Also, the I would say most likely the least difficult because that's the closest to a real animal that the movie ever gets. Yeah, I, I really think that the movie suffered from being rushed. It definitely did because why does Godzilla 2014 visually look so much better than Kong Skull Island in 2017? Now... I will make an argument for the environmentals. The environmentals like, I'm not, are very good. I'm not going to say anything bad about uh, the CGI backdrops because the CGI backdrops no, were, were fucking good. amazing. Those were all very good and a lot of Atmospheric the... Atmospheric stuff, you know, including... Um, a lot including, of the effects were really good too. Like flies and little little touches that just, just make you feel like you're in the space. That was very well done. Definitely. Mostly what we're talking about is... The, the actual animations of, of different the things. The movements were just really odd. I did think the octopus was really good. That was another one where you could see how slow everything was, though. I mean, okay. for me, I could see it all the time. And it was a big part of the reason why I couldn't enjoy the action was because I could see every move coming from a mile away. I was just sitting there waiting for every action to be done so we can move on to the next. I don't like that feeling. I shouldn't be feeling impatient watching a monster fight. I also got really frustrated with the fact that I get that you're not going to tell the traditional King Kong story where, you know, the woman kind of falls in love with King Kong and then they get sent I'm off. I'm fine with that. That's, that's fine. You know, I, I get it. You don't want to kill off King Kong because, like, <laughs> the minute he comes into Manhattan or wherever the fuck you want to take him, airplanes mm-hmm. come and he's gone. Right. And you can't set him up as part of your... Uni- your extended universe with all the kaiju together. That's fine. And there was a throwaway line that said that he's going to get bigger, essentially. Yeah. So by the time that Godzilla comes back in the modern time and the two of them get together, yeah. Which, I gotta say, sin right there, because putting it in the 70s automatically makes me 
think of the 70s film. Exactly. Like, I don't understand why it was that far back. Yeah, why couldn't it have been modern times? Like, really, you didn't what? You modern times. All you have to do is take it out of the Vietnam War. If you're not going to do anything with the Vietnam War motif other than the soundtrack... And literally nothing else. And and the fucking Richard Nixon bobblehead. I really think the only thing, the only reason they did that was so they could have an excuse to go rah 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 military because otherwise you'd have to wait all the way until the two thousands. No, you could have had it with the the Gulf War. Uh, Yeah, but location. The Gulf War was certainly a lot more rah rah military than fucking Vietnam. But, But I think that the reason why they picked Vietnam is because location wise, it's close. It's an island in the South Pacific. We were at war in an island in the South Pacific, and the most recent version of that was the Vietnam War, so we're just going to put it there so they can just travel from Vietnam to Skull Island, and there you go. Also, why couldn't we have made fucking Brie Larson's character fucking Jack you know, in uh, in the fair, 70s movie? Because, yes, like, that's... But to be she, fair... She did hint at the fact that she was a conscientious objector and she was making anti-war... Uh, things and they never get back to that in any way shape or form and i think that's a problem yes but to be fair just like in godzilla 14 every single character in this movie was shortchanged it's not a gender thing it's not oh why wasn't it more listen why wasn't she there everybody sucked like john c Riley was the only one who was given any props and even he was kind of shafted because that not to get into spoilers but that ending like what the fuck why also, like, why are you showing an ending to the movie in the fucking credits while everybody's fucking walking away? Because there's no reason to stay for that. People might as well just get up and walk away. There's, th- you didn't lose anything by not seeing that. It was dumb. So, I put this at a 2 out of 5 because a Godzilla roar should not be the best thing in your King Kong movie. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't the worst thing ever. It didn't really make me as angry as Godzilla. Which is why it has a better rating than Godzilla for me. But all I wanted was a fun movie to turn my brain off and have fun and enjoy. I wasn't looking for a masterpiece. I wasn't looking for Shin Godzilla. I just wanted to have a fun time. And after Fury Road, and I'm not talking about like the deeper meaning or anything like that. I'm just talking about action-wise. How do you settle for something that's at like 75% speed? See... I liked it a bit more than you, just because I like seeing giant monsters fight, and I can be really forgiving. But that's all I, I really, wanted. I really thought it was stupid that the movie plays it up like it's a light-hearted movie, and then it tries to get serious when characters die. And we literally don't give a shit about them. Well, especially when the characters are all killed off in funny ways. Like, it's kind of like watching a Final Destination movie, except for the movie tries to make you feel bad. Yeah, especially with Toby Kebbell's character. It was like, (laughs) it was like the whole thing with his letter to his son. And I was like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, establish your fucking character or don't establish your character. This movie suffers from having too many characters. I mean, good God, how many fucking characters were in this movie? To not develop any of them. Yeah, I mean, the the most developed character, I mean, granted, is John C. Riley, which I did enjoy in the movie because, I mean, he's John C. Riley. I can't, like, not enjoy him. Samuel L. Jackson always sucks as a villain. Like, Samuel L. Jackson least- should... I, I take that back. There is one movie uh, where he is a great villain, Unbreakable, but, like, most of the other fucking shit that he's in as a villain he he just doesn't work he's the badass motherfucker guy you you want to like samuel L. jackson and like if That's i don't true. like samuel L. jackson in a movie it's a problem like samuel L. jackson should be the character that i like not the character that i'm supposed to hate at least they took a note from godzilla 14 when everybody 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 said why the fuck wasn't this walter white versus godzilla at least they took a note from that and attempted to emulate that. But Samuel L. Jackson in this movie is not Walter White in Godzilla 14. Because Walter White is the only good character between those two films. Period. And it's not because he's written well by any stretch of the imagination. Because he's not. And <sighs> let's let's face it. Most people would rather see Samuel L. Jackson go like, 
this motherfucking ape is getting on this shit and he's gonna kick ass. Quit fucking with the ape. Why are you fucking with the ape? <laughs> You're right. Actually, now that you say that, I would much rather have him be the one trying to defend King Kong. Yeah. And then John Goodman could be the one trying to kill King Kong. I could see that. That would work a lot better. Especially after fucking cl- 10 Cloverfield Lane. Exactly, because I was super psyched to see Samuel L. Jackson and John Goodman work off each other. I was excited to see Brie Larson, but I kind of gave up on Brie Larson when out of 10 different trailers she didn't do or say anything even once. I gave up on her altogether. I was like, dude, John Goodman and Samuel L. Jackson, barely, barely even together in the movie. And they didn't have any good chemistry at all. And I think it's because they were... They should have been swapped. I think you're right. I'm still looking forward to the other films, but like I, I'm a little skeptical now. I this I feel that two they're rushing them. Movies are in a row too. Well, I definitely and want to do. For Godzilla two does not look good either. No, it didn't. No, I mean I was already against it because I'm like I don't want an American Mothra. I don't want an American King Ghidorah. I don't really give a shit about Rodan, but like especially don't put four monsters in a movie together when you couldn't even do one of them right before. I would you actually... still haven't done any of them right. You still have, like, Godzilla's the only one who's been done right at all, and he was barely in the movie. Muto sucked. King Kong was pretty bad. The, the skull crawlers were really just the Mutos, but shittier. Like, especially visually, there's not much of a difference between the two. At least the Mutos had personality. I actually kind of like the Mutos. You're confusing sex drive with a personality, but a sex drive is more interesting. <laughs> yeah. The the sex the sex stuff with the Mutos was pretty interesting. That was though. actually the only like the, that was one of the very few things that I actually really liked because I was like there there is a nuclear egg sac teabagging me in the face. <laughs> And I'm okay with that, because somehow that is significantly less offensive than anything else happening in this movie right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I really wanted to like this movie more than I did. And like I said, the it's story, just a disappointment. The story was crap. It, it, it would have been so much... This movie didn't need to be made. Like, yeah. you could have just had King Kong versus Godzilla. Just fucking spend more time building that fucking up. I, I get that you want to do shared universe and shit like that, but, like, you could just everybody the fucking knows minutes. the characters. Yeah. You could literally shorten the story into ten minutes and put it at the beginning of King Kong versus Godzilla. That's about how much we got yeah, out of this movie as far as story. We didn't build on anybody. And also, like, this movie mismarketed itself as, like, we're now going to see how Godzilla became the king of the jungle. You mean we didn't Kong? see. We're now so going to see. They're so interchangeable. They're so interchangeable. There is nothing to Sorry, distinguish I, I, them. I totally slipped that up. But, yeah. yeah. We're now going to see how Kong became the king of the jungle. And it, it's Literally like. Literally, all they did was add a couple of spoilers. Plug your ear for two seconds. Dead King Kong parent skeletons. And nothing emotional to go along with that. We just that would have been so awesome if we got to see like a flashback or something like that with like King Kong with his parents and all. Dude, you didn't uh, even need a flashback. You just need King Kong there with the skeletons and have him feel sad for a second. You just need to have him feel sad for the yak that he tried to save. You just need to have him hang out with Brie Larson for a second and joke around. Yeah, because King Kong, unlike Godzilla, actually gives a shit. Godzilla doesn't give a shit. That's like his personality. Yeah. No, they actually both give a shit about protecting humans. It's part of the reason why they're interchangeable. Well, King That's Kong apparently in this movie doesn't give a shit about saving humans, which is... He does. He cares about saving the native humans. He's their protector. Yeah. It's part of okay. the story. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. He cares um, about Brie Larson and saves her in the most improbable way that should have totally squished her until her insides came out. But Yeah, then, not to mention, like... Putting her inside the throat. Yeah. Of <laughs> How the fuck did she survive that? That was ridiculous. And there was no reason to do that. It didn't height. It didn't like heighten the suspense of is she gonna survive? No, don't put her in there. No, none of us were thinking that at all. I, no, n- nobody cared. I was a little disappointed that we never got to see uh, Jaws pride open. 
Yeah, we did. We saw it once, but they kept it short, which I appreciated because we've seen that. This will be the third time in a row we've seen that in an American kaiju movie. We didn't need to extend that. But one thing I did like that was new also makes no anatomical sense. I don't care. This was the only thing I actually really, really liked. He shoves the Mortal his, Kombat. So good. He shoves his hand down his throat, rips his organs out, and like the body just sort of deflates. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Yeah. It would have been better at full speed, but that was fucking good. I don't care that it doesn't make any sense. That was awesome. That was I, awesome. I also like that he was actually eating the octopus after after he killed it. But like I'm I'm surprised that the octopus wasn't but You understand why I, I don't care. I was kind of surprised when that you the... see a human being do that for real, you're not impressed. That's a squid wait. No, it's that is the same idea okay, though. Yeah. It's the same it's the same idea. Well, yeah, and it should have clung to his face because anybody who's fucking seen Oh Boy it, knows it did. that Okay. It did. Okay. Believe me, I saw this in slow motion. I can tell you for a fact, yes, it did. But That's interesting because like you watch it's like we experience something different. I don't. I don't know what's going on. I. I don't. I don't like that. I could see. I already said it. I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> All right. So disappointing. That's it. But moving on, dude, Logan. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. All the feels. I have the Logan fuzzies. Oh my god. It was so good. Every there was one sin in the entire movie, and I don't really care. That movie was pretty fucking perfect. It was also a shameless Mad Max ripoff, which is probably part of why I like it. That's fine. I don't care. That's awesome. Everything emotional was on point. All of the human drama was on point. I like that the superpowers took a back seat, but when they were on display, they just went full out. Mortal Kombat. Fatality. Every time. I was cringing. It was gross. The movie was kind of gross to look at sometimes. Oh, I don't really want to get into spoilers, mostly because like I had the ending spoiled for me by trolls. Fuck that. But I don't need to talk about the movie to talk about everything that was really fantastic in it. Because the acting for everybody was really good, but especially Patrick Stewart as an old man who... Because the movie doesn't shy away from how shitty it is to be an old man who can't take care of yourself. And how shitty it is to take care of that old man. Yeah. That's like a central part of the movie. Whoa. And I love that. I love seeing Logan taking care of Charles. I love the part, like, seeing him lift him up and carry him away in, like, this really sweet, endearing way. But then also the parts where he's like, I can't fucking handle you. I can't handle this. Oh, my God. So real. Uh, All the... Not gonna say it. I'm trying to think of how to say this without spoilers. I really don't want to spoil it. But his relationship to the little girl was so good and so fucked up. Almost reminded me a little bit of Manchester by the Sea. Mm. Actually, where we were praising Manchester by the Sea for being about how a father figure is trying to protect a child figure, but just absolutely can't do it. And it was almost as good as Manchester by the Sea. And I'm not... Saying that, oh, well, it's a little bit worse. It, it had other things going on. The fact that it was almost as good is mind-blowingly amazing. Because Manchester by the Sea was only about that. This was about a bunch of other things, too. All of the action. It, yeah. it wasn't Fury Road good, but it was close. Where, again, it's like, well, the fact that you were close was amazing. Well, it's different. One of, one of the things... It's very different. One it's of the very things new. I haven't seen this before in X Men, and I like that. One of the things that I liked about it was it was definitely a new visual style for super powered things that we haven't seen before. Definitely. Which is mainly seeing the full effect of superpowers. Exactly. Yeah. Even in this movie, where he he doesn't have his full effect for most of the movie. Yeah, but like, I mean, it, it's it was awesome to see a broken down guy who doesn't have the super healing power so that like each time those claws go out you know it fucking hurts yeah um and each time he gets hit you know that while he is essentially immortal to a certain extain he's not impervious exactly yeah 
Yeah, I mean, you feel the pain of everything. Not just him, but everybody else, too. Like, this yeah. movie hurts to watch, and that's awesome. I mean, yeah. it's not the most painful thing I've ever seen, but... But but I like the, the fact that... It's the most painful X-Men movie I've seen, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like the fact that the stakes are so high, which is interesting because, like, usually it's a fucking beam in the sky, and... This is more akin to Rogue One than The Force Awakens. Right. In terms of scale of, like, how the stakes are set and how much... Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I, I would say that it's better than Rogue One. Um, no, but, I'm just saying, like, in comparison, yeah. if X-Men is usually at the Force Awakens level, Logan is at Rogue One level. I, it's just a vague comparison. I'm not okay. saying take it yeah. that seriously or in any other context. I wouldn't really compare Logan to Rogue One otherwise in any other respect, but... I would say that it has a hell of a lot more heart than Rogue One Definitely. or the Force Awakens. Oh, for sure, but it also has... It is a more down to earth story and it has fewer characters to work with too. Yeah. And that's one of the greatest strengths. Like so many of these movies now, it's like how many fucking characters are you going to have? Like essentially every character gets like six minutes. Well, here's the reason why I was a little bit of a downer going into Logan. Not that I didn't think Logan was gonna be amazing, but here's my my thing. We've had nine X Men movies. Nine X-Men movies, and Logan has been either a main character or the main character of seven of them. And it's the fucking X-Men. I want to see other characters. We have a whole ensemble to pick from. Can we, like, focus on anybody else? Really? But, third time's a charm because the other two sucked ass. I, I don't really blame them for wanting to get it, like, one more attempt to get it right. And then actually got it right. Like, really, 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 really right. I think one of the greatest advantages that this movie had is the fact that they let the creators do what they wanted to. Like, so many of these fucking movies are bound to the fucking franchise that the directors and the the writing team and everybody has to not interfere with the story process, you know, with this, like, shared universe. They can't kill off this character. They can't do this and this and this. And... It, it it fucks up the creative process. It does. In fact, I mean, I'm granted, gonna... you have Warner Brothers that like, oh, we'll give you all kinds of artistic freedom. We'll we'll have you change the Joker completely. Harley Quinn won't be Harley Quinn. You know, mm-hmm. none of the fucking characters in Batman v Superman or Suicide Squad were true to their fucking character. Yeah, the spinoff parody that makes fun of all of the all of the franchise did was much closer. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's so funny. And like, I was ready to write off uh, Lego Batman as the best superhero movie of the year after I saw it because I was still like a parody. Exactly. Logan is Logan's a fucking film, which yeah. is not something that I can say about most comic book movies. You know, outside of, like, fucking Old Boy and A History of Violence. Or Fury Road, even. And Fury Road isn't based on a comic, though. Oh, no, you're right. I'm really happy to see that audiences are rewarding these kinds of movies, though. Because what are the most successful movies that have come out? Mad Max Fury Road, where they took 30 years to develop it and to do whatever the fuck they wanted. Deadpool, where Ryan Reynolds was like, fuck everybody. This is my baby. I'm going to make this shit happen the way I want it to happen. And nothing else is going to get in the way of that. And Batfleck is now trying to like, he was trying to do that until the Lego movie came out. And then he was like, I can't. The Lego movie, of course. And then Logan. These are the movies that are not only just better movies. They're doing significantly better than the cash grab. We don't give a shit about the franchise movies. Like Godzilla. Like... The DCU movies. Also, I have to get on the DCU like movie. Like, Gods of Egypt, even. Gods of Egypt did shit. Like, we're finally in this period where, like, these piece of shit cash grab movies are not doing well. And even are not expected to do well. Like, this Valerian movie that's coming out, even Wonder Woman, they're being predicted as, like, these are probably going to be the biggest bombs of the year. Oh, Ghostbusters, even. Like, these, like, Ghostbusters was a weird one because... We can bitch him on or whatever. Oh, it's about Gamergate, whatever. Here's the problem. 
the people who made the movie did not want to make a Ghostbusters movie. That's the reason why Ghostbusters sucked. But they were tied to this franchise to do a cash grab because they spent too much money on it. Honestly, as much as I don't like the idea of their original film, the Glass Ceiling movie, that sounds way fucking better than Ghostbusters. I mean, the basic premise, too, of like an all-female ensemble superhero film? Sure. Fuck yeah. That sounds cool. That would have been way better than female Ghostbusters. I mean, not because they're female, but because the actual product sucked. Anyway, not my point. My point is, is that I'm glad that we're at a point where the audiences are rewarding this shit. They want more of the director taking creative control. They want more of the art team putting in their due. They want more development. And they want something closer to what they actually, like, to the source material. They want an art a real artistic representation of their franchise. They don't want this cash grab bullshit. They don't want fucking Gods of Egypt. They don't want a whitewash re- uh, Ben Hur remake. They don't fucking want like all this bullshit. Passengers didn't even do that well. Like they don't want this crap. And it's making me really happy to see that movies like Logan and Lego Batman movie are succeeding over crappy DCU movies. One of the things I also got to say is like one complaint that I've heard a lot, especially with superhero movies are, oh, they're too dark. Why can't they be like the Marvel movies? Like, why can't they be lighter? You know, we need lighter movies and all that kind of stuff. Fuck you, Logan. The Dark Knight. Yeah. Those movies are better than all those fucking other ones. And nobody was bitching that those were too dark and gritty and adult. No, it it has nothing to do with dark. It has to do with, you know, is Bland. it? Well, it has it has to do with uh, being faithful to the source material. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, there are ways to be unfaithful to the source material and still be good. Oh, you definitely. Know. But you I need mean, the to Chris Nolan universe, some, spirit, some character. Yeah, exactly. The Chris Nolan universe isn't very faithful to Batman, but you know. It works because... It's faithful to the spirit. It's faithful yeah. to the characters. It's I mean, faithful you could, to, like, the tone and the theme. Yeah, I mean, you could also make the argument that Logan isn't faithful to the Old Man Logan series. Which I like that they make a point of that in the movie. I love everything about that. That was all played perfect. Well, that was more with the X-Men, but, like, there is actually a series called Old Man Logan, which... Oh, like, no, it, I, yeah. see, I see what you mean. Yes, I see what you mean. Um, I have to put in one shout out about this movie though, because it's my this is part of my jam, but also this kind of shows a lot of what we're talking about with like the artistic integrity and also straying from being faithful while also being faithful in spirit. There was a yellow Wolverine costume suit made for this movie, and it looked really fucking good. I hope at some point we can maybe see a photo. The suit looked really, really fucking good. Here's the thing. The costume designer, who already went ahead and made the damn thing, argued against using the suit in the movie because he said that he took apart the movie and he analyzed the character and he couldn't possibly see any way for this character at this stage in his life to wear the suit. To He couldn't see this character, this iteration of Logan. And I think that the suit was going to be used in a flashback anyway. It's not going to be like old man Logan. But he couldn't see Logan's character branding himself in like this flashy outfit. Because a lot of times when superheroes wear the costumes, part of it is they want credit. They want credit for doing something. He couldn't see Logan as a character doing this. So he argued against using this amazing costume that he made. And he was totally fucking right. Well, I I will also argue that Hugh Jackman is too tall for Wolverine. And part of anybody who's actually like read the comics knows that Wolverine is short as fuck. I mean, that's why that's why he's called the Wolverine, because like he's small. Yeah, he's a small. I mean, Wolverines will go up to bears and be like, fuck you, get out of my way. And they will fucking scare this shit out of bears. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes they even fucking kill bears. Yep. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, so Hugh Jackman can't be that Wolverine because he's too tall for that and they didn't do any Lord of the Rings effects to make yeah. him shorter. Um, that costume only works if you're small. Yeah, because you're trying to compensate a little bit. Exactly. That's fine. 
But I really appreciate that they put that much work into making some a really good product and still argued against it because as good as it was, it wasn't the strongest choice. Yeah, this movie didn't There's need There's nothing it. I can respect more than that. Also, nobody else was wearing a fucking costume, so it would have been yeah, weird anyways. Been, well, like I said, I think this was supposed to be for a flashback that was oh, edited out of the, the movie about the Westchester. Oh. I think that's where it was supposed to fit in. I'm yeah. not 100% sure. You know, these are all based off of rumors. Who knows? So, yeah. But for, for all the people in my family and my friends who are like, well, you just don't like anything. Kong was a disappointment. Logan is f- almost fucking perfect. Like, 97%, I yeah, would say. Yeah, it... it like, this, I, the, the small flaws in the movie don't bother me enough to even bring them up. It's too fucking good. I don't care. This will definitely be in my top 10, possibly in my top oh, 5. Nothing. It all depends on the year, because I don't know what kind of year yeah. it's going to be. But Another point. Hollywood, how fucking hard is it to put some basic ass Spanish in your movie? Like, Logan didn't even use subtitles once, and it was all very basic Spanish. You didn't really need. I don't even speak Spanish. You didn't need subtitles. It's fine. But how hard was that? Why can't we get more movies that do something like that? Because in Logan, it worked fucking awesome. I. I don't know. That's all I'm saying. And. And. As long as we're nominating. Shitty makeup in shitty comic book movies. Can we actually nominate really, really amazing on point makeup in awesome comic book movies that actually deserve a nomination? I think probably the standout scene, you know, just to exemplify how awesome the makeup was. The doctor's was, office. Yes. So fucking good. So fucking good. I mean, if oh if my God. if if you're contemplating whether Mad Max Fury Road or The Revenant gets an award for makeup and you're arguing that sake logan is more impressive than the revenant as it's, far as yeah, like the I makeup would, goes I place, because i would place logan directly in between those two movies yeah because um be, yeah and the it's not it's not mad max amazing. but like one, mm-hmm. one of the things that i really appreciated about that makeup was it it showed a difference in time with the scars there there was variance. Yeah. I mean, there was everything from, like, facial scars to all that kind of stuff. That's not what Hugh Jackman looks like. Well, you say all of that stuff, but, like, if we're going to go just ignore everybody else in the movie, and there were a lot of really, really good makeup effects on other people, only Hugh Jackman, head to toe, real quick. Old makeup. Which, oh my god, the old makeup on Patrick Stewart was so, so... So fucking good. Oh my god. Yeah, because he he so doesn't he doesn't look like that. No, he doesn't look anything like that. Like I I know because I've studied makeup to a certain extent exactly what they did to him. But I couldn't tell you how they did it that well. Oh my god. Anyway, Hugh Jackman, old makeup. Facial scarring, new scarring, old scarring, fresh wounds, pulsating bloody wounds, pus. Which, by the way, can I say, ew, goddamn. The Clothing knuckles. Stains. The knuckles were so good. Especially because they incorporated the hand makeup of blood, but also scars on the knuckles for, all I'm going to say is both characters. Because I happen to know that in the movie, the other character had that. And I noticed, even before... You see that happen in the movie. They actually had the makeup on her knuckles. And it was so good. It was so good. Oh my god. <sighs> this movie was so good. Are we allowed to talk about that character? I'd rather not. We may have to talk about most movies without spoilers. Let's just not. I know most people probably already know. But I don't want to be the shithead that spoils it. Yeah. Logan's too good. I, I'm sure we can have a spoiler talk at some time. But. Yeah. Yeah. With Logan though about my Mad Max thing, you had you had all the action from the fourth movie, including the soundtrack in one of the scenes, with the sand, the guns on top of the cars, the percussion stuff, you know, all the car action sequence. You totally had that. 
you had the feral child from the second movie, you had the lost boys from the third movie, and then you had the family drama from the first movie. Not to mention you have <laughs> you have Max and Logan. Well, yeah, exactly. Especially from he's he's kind of a combination of Max and Fury Road and Max in the Road Warrior. Yeah, I agree. Depending on what point in the movie you're at, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. Uh Kong, two out of five. Logan, four point nine out of five, at lowest. At its absolute worst, it's a four point nine out of five. Logan is what I want to see more out of superhero movies. So good. I also really like the fact that this movie was such a callback to westerns. I mean, uh, there's. I I was a little miffed that out of all the westerns, they picked Shane. I mean, yeah, I I think you know what I, I would have people... loved. I would have loved True Grit. Yeah, that would have worked better. Yeah, and the original True Grit. That yeah. would have really... Oh, that would have been good. Yeah, True Grit would have worked better. Um, I mean, Shane's okay. I, I was just kind of like, Shane? It, 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 Shane's a little light for this movie. It was a little light. And like, I get that they wanted to have that monologue at the end, but I just... True Grit would have been closer in terms of like thematic parallels yes but i mean also you know laura exactly yeah like yeah i i get what you're saying so like i said that's super nitpicky though like that's really nitpicky i don't really care that much yeah so i I, i'm gonna say it's five out of five for me um i absolutely love this movie i loved it even more the second time and uh good god does it have heart and that's not something I can say about most superhero movies because most superhero movies are so fixated with either the action or with character dynamics, quips, and all that kind of stuff that like you lose character. Mm-hmm. It this this movie was fantastic, absolutely. And King Kong, I would probably put at the same level, uh, you know, two two point five, even though. I, I liked it a little bit. I, I feel that I liked it a little bit more than you. Well, you put um, it a half a star higher than me, so. Yeah, so it 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 was fun at parts, I, but, it, but it's nothing to go home and like say, oh, wow, I really want to see this again. I just wanted to have a fun time. It's and not, I'm sure plenty of people did. Just, yeah. It's not easy trying to have a good time. All right, let us know what you think of Kong Skull Island in the comments below. Also, let us know what you think of Logan. And if you would like to hear us do a completely no holds bar spoiler talk on the film. Yeah. And by the way, please don't be the shithead that I saw and just randomly post oh here's the ending by the way yeah just don't do that like <laughs> it, it's one of those things it's like you know like and when you, i saw it it was on a thread for a completely different thing it was about some upcoming tv show that had nothing to do with comic book movies or x-men or anything it was just some dick randomly posted at the end of the movie right and i remember for the longest time i i was like don't spoil things or I'm going to spoil who dies by Negan's bat <laughs> in The Walking Dead. Yeah. Because I read the comics. All right, people. Thanks for listening.